you know, I just want to come to you as American Negro. I'm back again. King Hop, FBA. You know, I, I tell you what, and ADOS, I know ADOS lost some momentum, but I want to say something. You know, in, 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 there's a saying among the community and family, you got to take the bad with the good, right? But what I want to know is what good are we experiencing as the Negro? As the Negro, as a slave descendant, where's the good? You know, in life, a lot of things happen. So they, the saying says you got to take the bad with the good. People lose set family members. I have a friend that his sister's in critical condition, you know, just because she had a brain aneurysm. Um, things happen. People health go bad. People die. People get sick. Um, bad sometimes conversation. People lose their homes. Sometimes life happens, right? Children are not doing right. Sometimes your, your spouse is not getting along. Among all of this is happening, so bills, you know, among you experiencing hardship as a slave descendant, not being protected financially and political protection, where at large somebody can harm you, do something to you, and you got a negative response because you're black and you're a slave descendant, and you don't have policy inside the protect the protection of government. You don't have policy. You don't have policy. In the community, you don't have loans from the bank. I'm standing in a, a, a storefront mall with probably about 70 stores in it right now. Now, one business is black. We got everybody in this mall, whites, own, Italian, L.A. Fitness. We got Mexi some Mexicans own stuff across the street. You got all kinds of people in business. Chase Bank across the street, which built themselves off of slavery. And there's no policy that we can opt in as the uh, American Negro, as a slave descendant. No policy we can opt ourselves in that protects us in the community and say that you are part of American terms of ownership and you can live before your family and wealth and protection. And nobody's supposed to be able to walk up to you and falsely accuse you or harm you because of identity crisis. Because you are a black person and they have drawn a picture about you or a black man. And uh, the country has said, okay, we know this is wrong, but because we have power and with government, you can do this. This is a, not even just common law, but it's disrespect in terms of regular law and way by constitution. We have not been honored as a people. And yet they say, take the bad with the good and regular communications, uh, exchanges and, and, and the social arena and people are dying in your family from health failing or this and that your children. Like I spoke about earlier, maybe this orderly because they're growing and you dealing with the stress of regular life and then you dealing with the oppression of a strategic matter and this is normal to black people and this is where we stop you got a president that's putting a black woman in your face Kentonji Jackson she's not going to do anything for black people every day she's this sworn in thing she in the news it's annoying. She ain't got no policy set up for us. She's not screaming and talking about us. All she's talking about is she, her position and she black and she made. That's a token. That's a token Negro position. That's not for us to fight. That's not like uh, Eva Longora. That is not like a uh, uh, the, 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 uh, the uh, Latino woman. That's not like them. Were they able to actually grab policy and put it into action off of our uh, born institutions? You see, that's not that's not like a Alexandra Cortez. Was she able to say in, out loud and scream that Latinos deserve reparations, Hispanics? That's not what that is. That Katanji Jackson is sitting up there looking like she got a good job. She's not ready to go to work for black people. This is what she's supposed to be there for. She's there to serve the people, and we are the people. She's there to serve blood lineage. Blood lineage. She's there to serve and practice self-preservation because she is a slave descendant. She's not, she doesn't have that tone, and we got to mirror that. In terms of mirroring, no protection, and then life happens at the same time. This is the oppression that you cannot call, you can't name it, you can't even describe it. You have to be a black person to understand this kind of oppression.
And we sitting up here behind the wall working for white people. We got white bosses. The, the native so-called Indians don't even have to worry about that. They get to hire white people because you should not send a descendant of slave to a job with a white boss. But they, see, that's how it was set up. You shouldn't have to do that because that, that PTSD, slave syndrome, where you understand that you were a slave one time through our documentaries, through our, the invoices, through our movies, having plantations in every city that mirror your, your suffering in this form. And now there's a white man standing over here telling me what to do for low pay. A pay that doesn't respect me. And some of these companies don't even offer you insurance and policy and benefits. But yet, we got other groups who own stuff like Asians, Arabs, Arab American, all this kind of stuff. They own it. These people are protected by our government. And this is what we're telling you, black people. You're in a war, and this is very strategic and very sophisticated what they're doing. They have a very sophisticated move against us. And then life happens. At the same time we're dealing with this, life also happens. So when life happens, you're even more distraught. Even to look at the news and see the war in Ukrainian war, you shouldn't be worried about it. You can't even eat properly sometimes because you can't even buy what you want to because of this government and the way it supports, it, the way it responds to you after you support it with your tax dollars even. You guys need to wake up. This is serious, very, very serious that we're under this kind of red tape and that we're being red line. It, it's, we don't deserve this. They saying you deserve it because you didn't do this, you didn't do that. That is a lie. This is a very real strategic chessboard and we didn't need to know what's going on. We need to press the issue and get the check cut. Black men need to start getting along in the community. And we need to uh, come above this dysfunction in our exchange, in our social exchange, so that we can move forward.